everyone, my name is Elaine, and today I'm going to be both summarizing and reviewing the 23rd novel in Terry Pratchett's Discworld series, Carpe Jugulum, starting with the summary. Agnes and Nanny attend the naming ceremony of King Varence's and Margaret's daughter, Esmeralda. Granny is not in attendance. Nanny and Agnes discover that Varence invited a family of vampires to the ceremony, the Magpiers. After the ceremony, Varence informs Agnes and Nanny that the Count told him that the Magpiers intend to take over Lanker and move into the castle. They want a new feeding ground. Having fallen under the vampires' hypnotic spell, most don't protest the news. Agnes is capable of resisting the vampire's control because of her dual personality. Lanker's falconer appears able to as well. Vlad, the Magpier's son, finds Agnes's ability to resist attractive and makes several advances. The vampire spell is removed from Agnes, Nanny, and her sons. Agnes is asked to fetch Granny by Count Magpier. Agnes and Nanny go to Granny's cottage. It's been cleaned, but Granny is not there. Agnes and Nanny fear that Granny feels they don't need her anymore because once there were three and now there's four witches. The Count continues his family's training to resist traditional vampire disposal methods like sunlight. The family discusses getting rid of their servant, Igor, the Countess especially isn't fond of his gothicer-than-thou attitude, and how he forces spiders to spin webs in their home. Agnes discovers that mightily Oath, the Omnian priest who conducted the naming ceremony, can resist the vampire's spell. Nanny sends Agnes to the Catchel to fetch Margaret and her baby to both protect them from the vampires and have Margaret help them to find Granny. Agnes elects to take mightily Oats with her. On their way to the castle, the pair notice several people wearing scarves around their necks to hide the bite marks. Mightily Oats and Agnes retrieve Margaret and her baby and take them back to Nanny's cottage. After filling Margaret in on everything that's going on and scrying for Granny's location, the three witches set out to speak with Granny. The witches find Granny in a cavern. Granny's upset she was not sent an invitation to the naming ceremony. After telling her what's going on, the witches try to convince Granny to help them rescue Lanker. They don't seem to have any luck even after Granny is informed that her invitation had been stolen by a magpie. Granny doubts her ability to do anything about the vampire problem. The three witches return to Lanker to face the magpiers without Granny's assistance. The three witches head to Lanker Castle. Since the Magpiers have built up a tolerance to the traditional vampire disposal methods such as garlic and holy water, defeating them proves to be harder than they expected. Mightily Oats tries to come to the witches' rescue and fails. When it appears as though there is no longer any hope, Granny appears soaked and swaying with exhaustion. While the Count is distracted by Granny's attack, Nanny and Margaret escape, leaving Granny, Agnes, and Mightily Oats with the vampires. Granny cannot break through the Count's defenses and is defeated. The Magpiers feast on her blood. They intend to make her into a vampire. A group of Nakmek Fiegels break Varence out of the castle. Margaret and Nanny stumble upon the Magpier's servant, Igor, in the stables. Igor feels as though the current Count of the Magpiers is far too modern. Igor prefers traditionalist methods of vampirism and decides to leave the family behind since he finds them utterly disgraceful. Nanny convinces Igor to help her, Margaret and baby Esme, escape Lanker. Vlad offers to turn Agnes into a vampire. She refuses. Granny Weatherax struggles against the vampirism that courses through her veins and thrusts the pain it induces in the Castle Forge's anvil. She defeats the vampirism after facing the darker side of her nature. The vampires take Agnes to Uberwald. The Nakmet Fiegel free Varence of the vampire's influence. Granny's struggle leaves her weak. Despite this, she and Mightily Out set out for Uberwald. Nanny and company arrive at the Magpier's castle. While Margaret and infant Esmeralda hide in the crypt, Nanny and Igor begin fighting the Magpiers using a stockpile of holy water and other anti-vampire weapons collected by old Count Magpier. The Magpiers discover that the traditional vampire disposal methods they thought themselves immune to are having an effect on them again. They begin to experience strange cravings for tea and biscuits, which upsets them since it deviates heavily from their typical cravings. Granny and Mightily Oats arrive at the Magpier's castle. The Countess tries to slip into the crypt by turning herself into green smoke and heading through the door's keyhole. Margaret captures her in a jar and throws it down the well. The Count breaks down the door. Nanny and Agnes discover that the vampires have captured Margaret. The three Langer witches catch up to Margaret and the Magpiers. Igor revives the old Count Magpier. The truth comes out when Granny reveals that the Magpiers failed to turn her into a vampire and that they have been weatherwaxed. Granny had borrowed her own blood, blood they had consumed, which allowed her past their mental defenses. The Magpiers discover that they are unable to harm baby Esmeralda or do anything that Granny is incapable of doing. The family is horrified further when they discover that Igor has reawakened the old Count Magpier. He spilled a drop of blood in the old Count's ashes, and that Uberwald's people would refer the old Count to their modern vampirism. Oates mortally wounds the new Count with an axe. The Count is punished by being given 50 years to rest and think about things. Granny entrusts the old Count with Vlad and Lacrimosa's care. He is to teach them the old ways. They turn into a flock of magpies and disappear. The witches return to Lanker. And that's the end of the novel. Now, onto my book review. I felt as though this novel had a very, very slow start. There was a lot of setup and a lot of time was spent explaining things like the nature of vampires. I definitely would have preferred a more streamlined version of the novel's current opening. In Carpe Jugulum, Granny initially seriously doubts that she can do anything about the vampires. This isn't something we really see in Granny throughout the series, self-doubt, the sense of defeat and hopelessness. She's usually quite confident and this really humanized her and made her more relatable to Pratchett's readers, since even the most confident people struggle with self-doubt and a sense of defeat from time to time. I also really appreciated how calm, cool, and collected she was when she explained how she had gotten past the vampire's defenses at the end of the novel. It was definitely one of those badass granny moments that I really look forward to whenever reading a novel she's involved in. 
I thought it was interesting to see the clash of modern and traditional vampirism and gothic ideals. Lisps and limps and whippings for Igors versus no dust or spiders or dribbly candles and lots of resistance training. I liked how Pratchett reinvented and reimagined vampires in a way that makes sense, none of that vegetarian vampirism nonsense from the Twilight series. The novel's subject was also far darker than the vast majority of the other novels in the series. It also lacked a lot of the humor, which is found in most of Pratchett's work. Overall, I gave this book a 3.5 out of 5 star rating. I think this novel suffered a lot from pace and the fact that it didn't always feel like a Pratchett Discworld novel because of its darker subject matter, which reduced its humor. But that being said, Granny is both made more relatable in this novel and given the chance to shine, which I really, really appreciated. And there you have it, my summary and review of Terry Pratchett's Carpe Jugulum. If you've read this book, if you like what you saw here today, please leave a comment down below. I always like to know what you guys think. Smash that like button until it's blue. Subscribe, ring that bell so you'll know what's up, and we'll catch you all in the next one. Bye, guys!